So how safe are you when you're traveling in the skies? And what is the industry doing to keep you safe? Matt Robinson is an airline pilot and flight instructor. He gained years of experience as an aircraft accident investigator with the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps as well. A welcome airplane crashes like the one in Mexico make news. But overall, how safe is air travel? Air travel is the safest mode of transportation out there. You're far more likely to be injured or killed in your automobile than you are uh, in air travel. So uh, highest uh, safety rating. And Matt, looking at the Mexico plane accident, uh, why do you think so many people survived? There are a lot of variables, Mike. Uh, the big one is velocity or speed of the aircraft. As we all know, it was in the process of taking off. Relatively speaking, that's slow compared to the 500 knots that it will fly uh, in cruise flight. Also, proximity to the ground, the energy attenuation is what we, what we refer to it as in the business. Uh, it's just the speed at which it had uh, it, it, when it decelerated and crashed. Mm -hmm. In just the past few months, though, we've seen some remarkable cases of planes in trouble. Uh, we've got some video of the Saudi Arabian Airlines Airbus A330 jet uh, it made an emergency landing in Jeddah. Uh, you can see flames. Uh, 53 people were hurt. No deaths, though. And there are other examples of what, as well in recent months. This, of course, happened in May. Uh, is it the pilot? Is it better technology, a combination of those, or perhaps uh, newer, safer planes? What do you attribute it to? It's a combination of things, Mike, and the, the, the two biggest case studies is Asiana 214 in San Francisco and United Flight 232 in Sioux City, Iowa back in 1989. Those were also in the, in the approach phase. The velocities were relatively slow. Uh, there were about 111 fatalities in Sioux City, only three fatalities out of a total of 290 or some odd uh, passengers aboard. The industry does two things. First of all, we do proactive and then reactive uh, safety analysis. Proactive is testing the airframes, testing new materials, regulations. There are regulations both internationally and nationally pertaining to the design and manufacture of aircraft. Uh, there's a, an acronym that aircraft designers will use when taking into consideration crew survivability or passenger survivability, and that's CREEP. It's the container or the fuselage, the restraints, what keeps you in the seat, the environment, escape uh, aspects of it, can they get out of a burning aircraft, and then finally post-crash issues of maintaining that fuel where it needs to be and keeping it from exploding or catching on fire. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, the miracle on the Hudson uh, was even made into a film called Sully. When people survive these incidents, it, it's largely uh, the quick actions of the pilots, I guess, in some respects, but also the, the passengers. And it seems like when, when I fly, passengers really aren't paying attention to the, the, the instructions at the beginning of the flight. But it seems like in this case, uh, in Mexico and, and in others, uh, they do react rather swiftly. It is. It's in part partially uh, due to the pilot's actions. Uh, Captain Haynes in Sioux City, uh, uh, Sioux City actually uh, was uh, fantastic in crew resource management and bringing that aircraft down to the ground and deceling it, decelerating that aircraft in an almost uncontrollable state. But it is incumbent upon the passengers to follow those directions. Hopefully you're one of those people that does read that emergency safety card and pay attention because it actually will save your life. Uh, but that being said, it's a stressful situation. Only a fraction of individuals on 1549 actually donned their life preservers. Here they are in the water, freezing water, they're standing out on the wing, and they forgot to take their life preservers. So you always have to be thinking about where you're going to go, what you're going to do in the event this unlikely thing happens. Matt, I'm sure at dinner parties people find out what you do for a living and they've got lots of questions. What are the number one, the number one thing you try to impart to people when it comes to traveling in the air? Traveling in the air is safe. There's nothing to worry about. It's one of the safest forms of travel. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. You'll be fine. And how about your job as well? Uh, what do you learn when you go and investigate these crashes? I learn everything. Uh, as a good investigator, uh, you know you're doing your job right when you've been surprised on every investigation. You go into it with an open mind. You don't have any preconceived notions. You don't develop any theories. You collect the data. You analyze it. And then you formulate your opinions based upon those facts, and you prove it scientifically. Uh, so that's, that's about it. What I like to impart is don't come to a conclusion before the facts are out. Let the investigation drive itself, and let's be scientific and, and introduce some common sense into the whole thing. How long do you think before we know exactly what happened in Mexico? 
I'll usually, on average, Mike, the, the final report will take one and a half to two years to, to release. Uh, we'll see, maybe it'll be quicker than that. There's, there are a lot of data that need, needs to be gathered by the investigators, a lot of deliberation and analysis, witness statements. Uh, investigations aren't fast, they take time. A good investigation is thorough and that takes time and that's what I'd like to impart is just be patient, the investigators will do their, their job. Matt, thanks so much for your analysis.